<laughs> Pretty good impersonation. Well, let's let, let's let's take that one, uh, Dennis, my buddy. <laughs> You'll big. You'll settle. You'll settle for anything on a Friday I've, afternoon. I've got low <laughs> expectations. So I None. I stayed up late last night uh, for reasons for I was doing work for the podcast that we will discuss later. Um, but turns out uh, there was a cherry on top of me staying up late last night because we got some news out of. Uh, what the New York court system? Yeah, should we just like the, look directly the, at it, or should we like dance around it and just? I think we should just. The go. most striking description I've seen is in the courtroom when uh, the spokesperson for the juror, the head juror, uh, I believe, uh, was asked by the judge thirty-four times in a row. Nice. How they found the defendant. Trump sat there the whole time. There were no cameras allowed. The the monitor from the other room for the re press reporters went down, so no one could film it. Nice. We, there, no one could, you know. Uh, it didn't go no down on, on purpose, or it was just a. Oh no no on purpose absolutely. Okay, okay. Uh, it was it was he wasn't about to make a circus of it then or now. And the judge was, you know, pretty impeccable. But that 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 moment, independent of what you know will happen next, which of course did, right? You know, his you know his corrupt judge, blah blah blah, fucking blah, same diarrhea. Um, uh, for that moment, for those sixty seconds. Glorious. When he had to hear that 34 times, guilty. Some part of him, a, a part of him, guilty. shrunk and shriveled, and like he has always done, he was able to come back from that in just a moment of a, a, a matter of moments to go out and and have his attitude and demeanor. Uh, what he wanted it to be to exploit the financial uh, dexterity of these these supporters, right? And uh, he's just he's amazing. His fundraising, of course, has increased tremendously. Uh, the base is solidifying around him in days. Different factions of the Republican Party that ranged from, ah, he's not so bad, and no, oh, I don't know, I guess I kind of like him, and now they're saying, you know, fuck this. We want him. They're fucking him. You know, this isn't right. <sighs> These are Democrats. You know, they swallow it. I think, And so as the I, money increases... I might have predicted just the opposite. Everyone, all the people against Trump were like, oh, well, once he's convicted, then no one could possibly vote for him. But no, I think it's going to well, help. There's, in there's the statistics and there's statistics that tell us a little bit of the story. And of course, polling is going on now feverishly and will be released in a matter of days uh, that that, you know, actually gets at this. But a pretty recent poll of independence, and this was true state by state and true nationally, is that while it remains the case that that, you know, 86% of the people who are going to vote are have said for months now there's nothing that can happen that'll change my mind. That's 86%. There's 14% left. Those 14% are comprised of people that have obviously are don't say that. Of that group, a strong group in that group is independents and independents are important. They tend to be more college educated and they really are not connected you know, within a range with either the Democrats or the Republicans, and so they dare their objective. They tend to vote more intelligently than other segments of the uh, fourteen percent. Right. So when they were queried about this felony conviction, they said, "If Trump gets convicted of the felony, forty-two percent of them said, if he gets convicted of a felony, I can't support him." Forty-two percent. But if he does it, I can. Is the is the corollary? What's the what's if that? he doesn't get convicted, then I can't support him, right? The, true, 
if he doesn't get evicted, I will continue to support him. These are these are people that are in the Trump column. Right now, that's that's not been reported on as a hindsight, much to my surprise. And of course, it would have to be a hindsight because they haven't had time to do the polls. But that'd be the poll I'd be looking for, because they're 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 mutable. And um, it's you know while the the Biden campaign continues to stumble uh, in in many regards, their climb to get back the voters they lost in droves, young people, people of color. Doesn't doesn't Biden have a lot more money than, like, I've heard takes where he did, but not anymore. He within a week he won't because this will close the gap. But I've heard takes Trump where had, where because oh, we're so divided as a nation, the amount of money that you raise doesn't move the needle that much because everyone's so. Fixed um, in it all position. depends how it's spent, and what you what the only thing you're interested in really at this point is making sure that you win in the battleground states. You've Which got to win so there. You, not at the neglect. Yes. Not at the neglect of other, uh, of other, uh, uh, you know, wins and losses. Yeah. You've got to, you got to, you got to make sure what you want to expect happens. It doesn't right. just happen, like Hillary Clinton not not ever going to Wisconsin right. for the entire campaign. Wisconsin. I've stated that, stated that many times. But uh, so it all depends how that money gets spent and. Given that the demographics of a state are broken down for anyone who wants access to them by vote, not only by county, but by voting district, you can actually see by comparing one year to the prior year to the prior year where the swing neighborhoods are. Those swing neighborhoods one year went one way, then became convinced. One were with Democrats, Democrats, and then went with Trump. And then didn't, all right, well, maybe we get them back. So that money, if it's spent on something that gets those voters to vote right. while spending oodles on keeping your base it plugged in and happy, um, that money can make a difference. It will, the, the, the gap will end as a result of this conviction. His, his, his fundraising may double. Because the people who give five or ten or twenty-five every week, now they're really pissed. They'll double again and again and again and again. Right. So, if you want him to lose, do you want him to not get convicted of things? If you, no, 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 no. You, you, you. Unless you're really crazy, you wouldn't have that view. Um, what, I mean, what, just, I, what, I want justice, uh, but... You want justice, and so justice being an apolitical thing, uh, that's one question, but as you posed, how, do, how does one satisfy, what would satisfy both your desire for justice and your political uh, uh, right. you know, desires, right? I have desires. Um, this is... This is uh, What's happening is exactly right because it's the only thing of all the things that could happen. It's the worst thing for Trump. Number one, once you know that, then you know, no matter how how what what happens. How is it the worst thing? For it's Trump, the then? worst. It's the worst thing for Trump in terms of um, losing certain demographics like positional independence. That's what I'm talking about. That's why it's bad for him. It isn't bad for him because of his base. It isn't bad for him because of raising money. It's bad for him because of some Christian women in the suburbs and some businessmen and independents sure. who don't want to have a country run by someone who's a former, who's a convict, who's been convicted. And because, because the appeal, being a rapist was fine. But now that he's convicted, rapist wasn't. He wasn't convicted. It was a civil judgment, and so yes, it does count. It counted to a lot of people, but the people that it counted to aren't the people that Trump is worried about. That, or, or Biden for that matter. It gets down to this in this state, in the state of Michigan. When we went 
we didn't go for uh, we didn't go for Hillary Clinton. I know this county did. I know this district did. In and I know what neighborhoods did. That means if I wanted to work for the Dems and I was worried about it, I literally could see those addresses, never walk more than three or four blocks. She won because one such district went the other way. One district that size went the other way. It was a matter of thousands of votes that switched all of Michigan's delegates. Jesus Christ, their system is stupid. Win, win one, win them all. You don't, it's not like, Oh my God! Well, you know, fifty-one percent of the people went for Trump, and uh, and uh, and forty-nine percent went for Hillary. So you get ten delegates, and you get eleven. No, winner take all. Whose uh, decision was that? Oh, the Republican National Committee. Oh, who who runs that? Oh. Laura Trump. Who? What? Is there a relationship? What? It, what would presidential politics in the states look like if we used the popular vote? Um, we wouldn't have had a Republican president well, uh, we, we, for decades. Yeah, yeah, but but would the candidates only go to the cities and ignore the 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 countryside? I mean, yeah. No, I don't. I, I think running a running a national campaign is going after the the electorates the electorates in each state as the environment dictates, and those those approaches differ from year to year. Right. And so the analytics of that would would constitute it would be different in that your targets. I'm sure. I'm sure there are, are books are, written about this. Like just a. Well, I'm sure there are, but I think you've hit it. The swing states are the states with the largest populations. So it's California. Who picks the president? Well, uh, California, New York. But those aren't swing states, though, because they're in the pocket for one or what? the other, right? Swing states are the ones that could go either way, right? Swing in, states in, are the ones that decide it. In no, in, the, in in. Uh, okay, really? I was thinking swing states were the well, ones that were Well, no, I think you can look at it either okay. way. I think more to your point, though, the, the, it, 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 they may, we want to call them swing right. states. The base, we, what do we know now about California and what do we know now about uh, New York relative to the split in Democratic-Republican? All right, well, let's take that, right? right? And let's say that for each, that, that the, the Dems are more in control by 10%, which is huge. Sure. Huge amount. Sure. Huge amount in, in politics. So you've got givens there. Then the swing states would be, well, what are the next most populous states where it's not 70-30 for Dems or whatever? Right, right, right. Where it's more like, what does it need to be to be a swing state? 50-50. <clears throat> sure. And so those are medium-sized states, and there's probably more of them. So I but again, if it was popular it. vote, we wouldn't think about it in terms of states. Like, we're so used to thinking about... No, you. but you've got to think about where people vote, and the system of voting won't change. They vote in their precinct, oh, which right. is in their district, sure. which is in their county if they have them, which is in their state, which is in the country. So the apparatus is there. It doesn't matter whether you say, well, it doesn't matter whether... Uh, majority or, or lack of majority voted in this state right. at all. Right. It doesn't matter that Texas went to the Republicans. There's no consequence of that. Right. Because when it was slipped into the, the river of other numbers, it didn't make a difference. Into the river of other numbers. Yes. You know, and so there, there you have it. So that would, it would be different. The other thing that, 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 uh, will never happen, like what you just said, which will never happen, um, is, uh, you know, same-day voting and more, uh, you know, money-spending reform. There's five billionaires who went toward Trump uh, in the past couple of weeks. There's been a, one article I read called it a uh, avalanche of billionaires, and it named these five billionaires, one of which... Edelson, yep. who now is dead and his wife carries on, um, 
contributed to the PACs that support Trump. Ninety million dollars. Yep. Which is ninety million dollars. Which is pocket change for a billionaire, but yeah. Yeah, well it's freaking the interest from yesterday. Right. Depending on how much money you got, um, is in there. So so anyway, that that is uh that is a cause for celebration. And I started this episode, strangely enough, drinking coffee. Strangely. My significant spouse and I are going out for dinner, so I'm only going to have one of these. And when you see it, you will drool, because it is, in fact... A Bel Air Brown. A, sh- a Shorts Brewery. Bel Air Brown. Oh, Lord. I'm just going to have my Mao lager. What you got? It's a Mao. The, the yeah. Normal. What's around uh, here? So, uh, <sighs> we had a... Uh, I hadn't, we haven't talked since um, we went to the, uh, to the shore and spent the night to get away for a night and uh, went west where we go and went to some restaurants, yeah. bars, had some beers, and, and uh, I had uh, Googled hotels near where I wanted to be for dinner, which is a little uh, wonderful Italian uh, restaurant Mediterranean actually but fabulous fabulous food yes and I found this and that was 283 eight. it was just ridiculous I found one that was reasonably priced went to a decent picture it was a motel more of a place than anything sure. which we just wanted to sleep right. you just want a bed and it was affordable and I, I didn't take a lot of time with Uh-oh. it and got it and, and then the next morning um, uh, while I was waiting for Nikki to get up and get ready, I woke up early. I was fully packed. I mean, she wasn't packed at all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I too am a husband. Yes. <laughs> yes so. so I kept myself busy. I started looking at reviews. The first one said 36 bed bug bites, and I refuse to take this offline. They are threatening legal action to me. Another one, the picture you're seeing here is at least 10 years old. Ah. This place is filthy and should be closed down. I'm like, oh shit, did I pay for Uh-oh. this? No, I hadn't. So uh, I uh, uh, canceled it and then Googled all the way up the coast. I must have looked at 30 places. Because the coast is, it's only an hour from the southernmost Michigan uh, uh, lake town to Saugatuck, where we, we end up. And I go further north than that and fish the dams up there, so I know the coast well. <laughs> so I finally get all the way to South Haven, which is the second city stop uh, before Saugatuck. So it's pretty far north, about an hour, uh, 45 minutes from where we were from, where we were going to be. And I find this place, and damn, it's called uh, Victoria Resort. Yeah. It's off. It's up on a ridge. Uh, you can't see water because the houses and trees, but it's up on a ridge, and it's a place built in the 1900s that has four or five so-called cabins, which are little houses, <clears throat> and it has a hotel like an Airbnb or like a a, a B&B, what we stayed right. in. Right. That's got eight rooms. Nice. And then it's got uh, a residential. Looks cute. I'm looking at the website. Victoria uh, Resort. Yep. And uh, come to find what they call the coziest room, most economical coziest room. It's available. It's 159 bucks. Huh. Bam! I'm there. I'm looking. You get free access to bicycles. There's a swimming pool. You know, you you know, I know right where the area is, so it's just a short walk. In fact, we did walk to where we wanted to go to dinner, which was just just down the street, literally. Um, nice. And uh, uh, that was a blast. And then the next day, uh, we drew further, drove further north, and went to Sagatuck where uh, the story takes a dark turn. Uh-oh. 
Um, went to a restaurant I've been wanting to go to for years called The Southerner, and it boasts the best fried chicken. Stop, stop rubbing your legs or whatever you're doing. Oh. I can hear that. <laughs> whatever you're doing with your hands under the desk, stop that. <laughs> hands where I can see them. So, this is, um, so it's best time. fried chicken in the area, shrimp and grits, stuff I love. Uh, right on the water, you know, big uh, yellow, you know, parking lot, big trees. Finally, big I think yellow parking lot. She said, huh? big yellow parking lot. Big yellow building in a nice uh, parking lot. Oh, okay. And uh, I put up a parking lot. And um, so Nikki said, you know, I don't feel like eating all that much so if i got a side of grits i'd be fine if you want to go there finally i said all right let's go so place opened 11 we got there about 10 after 11 or so and uh maybe 15 after 11 got in a line and went in and ordered and had food that was pretty enough that we took pictures up and sent it to people i liked what i was eating she didn't like what she was eating she was afraid she wouldn't because the greens were were not mustard greens there were other greens, and she ordered it in spite of not knowing for sure. And I thought, well, that's a funny thing to order. Misty. And I said, oh, that's too bad. It was a, a greens and grits and um, with an egg on it. Okay. So anyway, we ate. I wasn't uh, dissatisfied. I took some home. There was enough of it. And uh, we went out the parking lot, and the... Striking thing about Saga, Saga Talk, among many things, its beauty and its uh, tourist uh, attraction of just endless shops that are some high-end stuff and interesting to go through, it's stuff to look at, not not like you know T-shirts and umbrellas and lawn chairs and stuff made out of driftwood, right? You know, yeah. And um, uh, but it doesn't have enough parking. And so you've got to park and walk for blocks. So when I got out to the parking lot, I said, look, it's just three blocks from here. We're going to go have a beer. Let's go have a beer, then we'll come back. And we did, and it took a little longer than I thought, because the guy who I used to play with down at Saugatuck, and I will play with again, was playing, although I was too uh, happy uh, not playing. Right, sure. <laughs> to even go in the bar and play. I, you know, We ate a lot. We'd been drinking yeah. for a little while. So we just went back. So we walked back up the hill and got there about uh, 20 after twenty after 1. We've been gone uh, just two, maybe two hours and 10 minutes and uh, from the time we got there. And I, as I approach my truck, I see that there's a sticker on the side window that's the size of a stop sign. What? Not quite that big. A big sticker, big yellow sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I look, and the yellow sticker's on the other side, and it says, um, this parking lot is only for people who are actively dining at the Southerner. If you And if you don't move your vehicle, we will take action at 1.30. But weren't you actively now, dining? you. No, I told you. I went out, and we, we walked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, park, right, right. We walked. But... Uh, and I said, wow, what is this? And I tried to peel it off, and it wouldn't peel off. It just tore the top layer off because it wasn't just, like, oh, shit. glued in the corners or whatever. Yeah. It was one of those peel-offs, right. and they put it up against both windows, bright yellow. It, it was as, it was, That's not cool. You know, not as big as a, it was about 7 by 8 inches. Sure. Or maybe 8 inches square. Big enough. Yeah. I said, what the fuck is this? I went down to the... I said, hey, what's uh, what's the story that's, here? That's Am I vandalism. just reading this? Is this parking lot? And he said, oh, no, it's only when you're actively dining here. And I said, well... That wasn't why obvious. Why didn't somebody tell me that? Yeah. I, I don't... I have no you idea. You can't punish me for things case. that you made up. And then. he said, well, there's two-hour there's two parking signs all over the place. And I said, yeah. And uh, we've just 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 got back after about two hours i said so when did you decide to put that on there and how did you know that i walked away were you watching me why didn't you call me and say to me hey dude right you can't you got it you don't part you must how else would you know that i wasn't inside the injustice 
And um, Nikki, now, she's pissed. I come back, and I'm thinking I'll just, you know, get it off, and then I'll, I'm, I may go back down there. I can't get it off. I need water. Uh, I, I don't didn't recall that I had water. I actually did have some in the car. Nikki got out of the car, slammed the door, went down and said to the guy, we need some water. We can't get this stuff off our windows. You've damaged our car. And uh, he said, just use a credit card. He wouldn't give her any water. Jeez. She came back furious, took a coin, and started scraping it off like a mad woman. I said, oh, Jesus Christ, you're going to scratch the fucking right. windows, woman. Sit inside, calm down. And uh, I got the water, and I got all the bright yellow off, but I couldn't get the glue off. I needed a razor, a razor uh, a tool. And I needed something that was heavier than water, to, although water ended up working. Uh, 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 and so I couldn't get most of it off, and now I couldn't see well out of the left, I couldn't see well out of the right. I went over with the window up, and I pulled right in front of the guy, got out of the car, so and I pointed to the window, and I said, this is how well your plan worked, that we could get this off of our car using a credit card and you wouldn't give us any water. So let me say this to you. I don't know why you hate one of your customers. I don't know why you're trying to punish me for being here. You never told me anything about being actively seated. Nobody said anything to me. No one reminded me. There wasn't a sign. All it says is two hour parkings. Instead of putting a little card in a window right. that says exactly the same thing, and then you can tow it after two hours. Go ahead. Sure. Do that. But don't vandalize my damage car. Damage my vehicle, and now you've made it dangerous for me to drive, and I'm going to tell you this. If I get into a sideways accident from the left or the right, I'm going to sue you, and you are going to lose this lawsuit. Have a nice day, sir. I said, no, that's not possible anymore because you ruined it. Have a nice day, sir. As I said, that's not possible anymore. I hope you don't have a good day because what you've done is you've made it so that this paying customer who dropped $100 in an hour in there... Right is never going to come back here because what you've done is you're mean-spirited and you're nasty to the people that support you. So, no, I won't have a good day. Have a good day, sir. <laughs> this went on. I was in no hurry. <laughs> By this yes. time, there were people who were listening because good. I was speaking as clearly as I am to you. And I never swore... I never got particularly loud. I just was assertive. And I just, I just took every opportunity to keep talking to him. He was turning red. He was like a smoke pipe that was ready to go off. Nice. And uh, so I'm writing, I'm writing this weekend a review. But I'm actually going to write two reviews. Can you like put... One is about the food that made my wife so sick. Then when we left the parking lot, unknown to us, about to be punished, that it took longer than usual because she had to find a public bathroom twice from getting diarrhea from eating what they served her at the supper. Wow. So, number one, that's why we're late. But that, that's a different story. Yeah. That's just that. Right. That's that review. Right. That's that review. The other review is, is about the rest. And I've, I've, I just basically read you what that review will say. I mean... And ruined our trip home, because every time we looked out the fucking window. Sure. I mean, given our listenership, I think uh, I think they're they're doomed. I think everyone's going to know about this. They're doomed, right. Uh, can That's you right. Can you, like, write, a, write an op-ed to the local newspaper or something describing your... Uh, I can go further than, further than the... Uh, other than the review, the newspaper wouldn't print uh, that. Right. Uh, you know, they would, they would, you know, unless I couched it in co community terms, which I should. I think you're capable of that. to say an out of towner going to a town that, you know, and I can, I, a quick Google will tell me how much money they make a year from tourism. Sure. That's what I am. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and what, therefore, I am just a representative of that group. Yes. 
and I'm a good representative of that group because I spend freely right. and frequently. Yes. You know, and and uh, and this is I don't litter. This is how this particular establishment is is fucking it up for the rest of you. Yes, 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 and uh, you know, and um, uh, I said I said to the dude too, and I'll put this in the in the in the article uh, is if you want to get me a ticket, then give me a ticket. That's fine. If you if you are in your rights to tow me, then tow me. That's fine. But don't damage my vehicle and make driving dangerous for me. If 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 you catch someone keying your car or breaking your win or breaking a window with a hammer. No, it's just say you catch but, somebody but, putting but, putting yeah, but, decals on your Yeah, 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 sure. But don't you have like legal recourse? If you really wanted to, to according to the man, it's a police authorized procedure, which he said, the police, the police will not let us do this any other way. That would be an that, interesting phone and, call and to, I, to the local police. Oh, uh, sure, but but this is, I'm sure, what the police say. Right. The police would say, you've got to notify them on the vehicle. 15 minutes from the dead the deadline right. you've got to you, and you've got to be able to mark your cars there may be somebody for all I know when I walked in the restaurant one of the people who worked there went over and put a chalk mark on my car you know right for how long I was there I don't know sure I don't know how they're but the police would say you got to have a way to you know inform them you got to have a way to monitor it uh and you've got to proceed. You've got to warn them, and blah blah blah. So that's what is this. So what would warn them is a bright orange sheet in the windshield. That's this big. Yeah. You just put it under the windshield. That's it. It doesn't have to be a sticker. And the cops would say, "We have stickers if you want them, or if you want them printed, you can go here." But you, I don't, I don't imagine that a procedure would say you must take an eight and a half by seven and stick it to the window <laughs> with glue that won't easily come off. I don't think the police, right. uh, you know, go that far. Um, but it's, it's. I'm just saying, if you, if you felt so motivated, you could fuck with them further. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and one of the things that one of the things that uh, I will do. Is I'm going to put a call into the place and I'm going to ask to speak to the owner because that's who I want to talk to. I don't want to talk to the manager sure. because what I want to talk to the owner about is the manager. <laughs> yes. He ultimately, uh, this is a, a management decision. This isn't the guy who put the stickers on the window. Sure. The guy with one hand, with, with one his arm was in a sling. So I, I, they'll, they'll know. I don't. I didn't get his name. I mean, I could have taken pictures. I was so pissed, though. I mean, I spoke reasonably, but you photo, know, if I want photo would have been case, a good idea. Well, yeah, and um, frankly, I just for producing I, content for this for this podcast. I know, I know. I was just too pissed, man. I was too. Yeah. I was like, get this shit off. For all we know, you could be making all this up. Out. Uh, you don't have any evidence. Yeah, yeah. It's just your well, brain, man. Yeah, yeah. Could be because you, this. It's a good story. This stuff's too crazy. You can't make this stuff. Up. <laughs> so yeah, I'm. I, I'm gonna. I, I, the motivation. See, I was strongly motivated to write it that night, and I picked it up. And Nikki said something about, uh, "Well, wait, you know, let's, you know, blah blah blah. I'll talk about it some more. I don't know, whatever." But I didn't do it. But that means that the, some of the steam is gone, but right. when I had to clean the shit off the windows, I was all hot and bothered again, that's for sure. It took me about, you know, it took me five minutes per window. I mean, I had to spray and scrape and spray and scrape. and Spray and scrape. You know, spray and scrape. Um, but the stay at Victoria uh, Resort was, uh, was, lovely. was quite a nice, and our room was so narrow that one person could walk between the end of the bed and the dresser while the other person stood between the bed and the other wall. 
Yep. There was a bathroom door that opened uh, in. Yep. Uh, and when you got in, you could you there was only one place you could stand to close it. It was their coziest and most economical room, as they said. Yeah. Uh, Cozy as fuck. Uh, yep. uh, but it was it was what we needed. I got on the bike and rode the bike around. I mean, so the 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 you I paid 159. This this flea bag place was 159. Right. You know, and this was 159. And uh, so I got we got access to the bicycles all day. Uh, uh, renting a bicycle in uh, South Haven for the day would probably cost you 75 dollars. Wow. You know. Um, and they had a pool, and they got a play, little playground. They had a great little playground. And they were good bicycles. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, you know, bigger tires, you know, sturdy. Sure. Uh, with places to carry shit, you know, like a little basket or something. So nice. that you could go downtown and, and whatever. <laughs> and um, we got breakfast uh, with it. Uh, and we had two coupons for free wine tasting uh, within a short drive from town. And they were selling... The place that owns the resort also owns vineyards, and uh, so they're they're selling the wine, which what we already had had our own. And um, uh, uh, get up and breakfast is says on our card. Please go to the dining room at eight thirty. We get to the office, which is off another building, a gorgeous old building, nineteen hundreds. Nice. And walk in, and there's like eight places set. And they each have a room number on them. And there was another couple in there. We were the only other couple in there, which meant that the vast, you know, there were a small room. But the other six couples weren't there. They were scheduled at other times. And this wonderful woman uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, came in and said, Hello, hey, honey. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got quiche and uh, we've got uh, 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 rashers of bacon. And as you can see, we have orange juice and tea at the table. There's coffee there. Uh, would you like a, a muffin or would you like toast or what, whatever? And, uh, oh, man, brought us out this beautiful quiche, vegetarian quiche. My wife loved it. Uh, I got her bacon, so I had a pile of bacon. I was a happy Sweet. man. I can't remember about the bread. Um, but anyway, so there you have uh, breakfast for two like that in a restaurant would probably cost about 35 bucks sure. with tip. Sure. I left him a $10 tip, uh, but that's immaterial. Um, and so now you've got amenities that are a value of $105. Sure. You know, it, as if you'd ride a bike all day. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, but breakfast is, is certainly clear, and for a room that you paid 159 bucks for, that's a damn good deal. You know, so I get back and they they write me and thank me, and on the way and in the morning when we're driving to the shore, not yet hit our first place where we have a little food uh, on the coast in a place called Union Pier, Michigan, and their wonderful little restaurant called Union Social. Okay. Uh, Great, uh, great uh, Michigan beers. Always have an amber on tap, and um, uh, so we. I got a phone call. Hello, this is Joseph from Victoria Resort, and I want to welcome you today to our resort. You can now check in at any time right, you like. And uh, like I I'm just thinking, checked out, bro. I started to say something, and it was like a robocall, but then I realized that the guy who was talking hesitated in a place a robocall wouldn't right. and I said oh this you're a real person Jojo and he started he started laughing and he said yeah he said it kind of sounds like a recording doesn't it and I said yeah and he said well good uh, what you know you you can come in anytime I said well it's only nine o'clock in the morning I can check in I usually check into three yeah you know and he said yeah we well, this is when you were going there I thought this was after you'd left no, 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 no. It's when we're going there. I wow, that's, say, though, that's the that's the. Attention. When I got back, yeah. I got an email thanking him, him thanking us, and saying, uh, on your birthday, you get to stay here for free, as long as you book one other night. That uh, level of please uh, put, of customer attention and detail. 
it's just so beautiful. Compare that. It's so rare. Compare that to the Southerner. Yeah. Compare that to the Southerner. To, totally different philosophies of how to treat the customer and how to. Are you ex, are you, you know exploiting what? or are you uh, caring for? Caring for. Responding to, responding to in a caring way. So here's the deal. From now on, as long as I'm within this vicinity living here, yes, I will go there once a year for my birthday around then. And and, and I think that you don't have to book for six months, within six months of your birthday. So I have to book in December. I'm booking June, you know, which is, you know, beautiful. You should go every year and... And stop by the Southerner and put decals on their windows. <laughs> the other thing about like, the Southerner like, too because is because that's like, what what are they going to do? Like you're just yeah, I don't know. That that level of of vandalism is so. Oh, and the Bloody Mary sucked too. That should be a third. God year. damn it! You and didn't. You should have led with that. You're sitting you're sitting at the bar and. Uh, the waitress was there, barmaid was there, busy, 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 and there was only room for six people at the bar. There were two of us there, two people there, so we made four. We had to wait a little while for our seat. No, no, no long wait at all. And it's, I bet you, you make a good Bloody Mary. She said, I do. And it's got all the accoutrements. Oh, God. She said, we do it right. Uh-huh. And I said, all right, I'll have one. And she said, plastic or glass? And I said, I don't, uh, glass, you know, I'm not going to walk on the street with it, because you can. Sure. You can take your, in these social areas in the towns sure. now. Yeah. In Michigan, you can carry your drink around. And uh, uh, and so I got what looked to be a 10-ounce glass, nothing, I've never gotten a Bloody Mary in a glass that small, with a good rim of salt, um, and the accoutrements included a stick with a pickle on the end of it. A round, very hard, uh, quarter-sized hot pepper that was sunk on the bottom. Uh huh. Um, and stick with a pickle. Uh, and a stirring and a and a, a a straw. There was, for the first time in the my history of drinking Bloody Marys, which I've been doing for going on fifty years. Yep. There was not a piece of celery. <gasps> In the Bloody Mary. Stockless. There was not, there was not, there were no olives. There were no black olives. There were no green olives stuffed with uh, feta or stuffed with blue cheese or stuffed with garlic. Blue cheese is great because it leaks into the drink. That didn't appear, it didn't taste to me like it had much horseradish. And I noticed when she made the next one, she was pouring in a quantity of pickle juice, oh, which is a great ingredient, but she was putting too much in. And I realized, oh my God, this Bloody Mary is not that good, but I ain't gonna complain a whole lot about a Bloody Mary. I thought about it. Because you hadn't really been screwed that over would be yet, it, seriously. All the other, right. uh, it, it was- it, An it, additional it, paper cut. That, that Bloody Mary, when she served it, Music should have went off my head that went like this. Dun 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 dun. Like foreboding. Warning, warning. Dun 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 dun. Warning. Dun 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 dun. Sir, you bloody Mary. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. And then the. Yeah. Close to a bloody Mary, close up to the face, close up to the bartender. Music Back and forth. Yes. Bloody Mary as a warning sign. Like, you you can't have a stockless Bloody Mary. Don't call it a Bloody Mary. Call it a bloody warning. A bloody warning, that's what I say. That's what I say. It was bloody warning. Where's my celery? Hey, uh, tell me you bring me all the accoutrements and yet I look. I don't see, I don't see a uh, a uh, gently peeled white onion. I don't see a series of blue cheese stuffed green olives, Greek olives. Is this a drink or a meal? Come on. Well, Pete, yeah, and I go. We go down to Union Social, 
on a Sunday and they have a Bloody Mary bar. And uh, because we were there the evening before, and, and the guy the guy said, hey, maybe you could come tomorrow. We're doing they probably got, like, fake and shit bloody, in there. Bloody Mary bar. And I said, oh, yeah, you know, maybe we'll see. And uh, I said, yeah, I think we'll come. You know, we showed up. And when we showed up, he said, that's great. You're going to get seated. Um, if you want the full uh, Bloody Mary bar, which is usually 15 bucks, for you to go and make it any way you want, I'll give you to you for the price of when we just bring you one, which is ten bucks. Uh-huh. So because you kept your promise and you're here, we go up this Bloody Mary bar, and it's as you'd expect, bowl after bowl after bowl of a crew. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This, is, this is like a salad bar, but it's for putting it's shit a into salad. Your drink. It's a, it is a, a Bloody Mary bar. Build your own Bloody Mary bar. Build your own. Hunks yeah. of cheese, two, three different kinds of olives, carrot sticks, celery sticks, onion. Real uh, white onions, yeah. Uh, big long toothpicks, uh, you know, to, to stab your stuff with. Is there room and, for uh, they, they, for the vodka? Well, and so like they if, bring if you, you the fill up your glass ice. full of like full of like vegetables, well, like you got to have salad. That's way, that's, no, that's not that's not the way you do it. You you first Sorry. of all, you take some of the ice out because they always fill the glass with. Yeah, of course, so, that's you know, one of the one of the ice. gimmicks. And 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 you uh, build your you build your uh, what you're going to put in there, right? And it also included, by the way, um, you know the 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 tomato juice mixer and uh, squeeze bottles of Worcester sauce and and pickle brine, Tabasco, and hot sauce. Yep. It was everything of any anybody could ever want. So you get your you get your your drink and you put your liquid in there and what you build you build so the cat the glass carries it it's not in the glass oh you you're hooking hooking it. shit around it and, and building right and so you got these big so you're like walking you around with this big thing and you're like whoa <laughs> right whoa well you hold it oh yeah whoa 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 <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't remember there there were there was bacon bits. I don't remember there being bacon, but one of the things that uh, I think it was there that I ordered it was a rasher of, of bacon, and I got six strips of bacon for like six bucks. I mean, big. That's a that's a buck a strip. And, and they served it. They served it in a glass, standing up tall. Bacon in a glass. glass. Rasher, you like rasher bacon? I like a full English place. Fried bread, fried sausage, wow! Fried eggs. That's uh. Once again, we're those are my those those are my bit my my little trip to the shore. <coughs> Anecdotes. Stories. Very good. Uh, I let's see. My news is uh, today was the last day at my job. I quit my job. Uh, and it was the first time that I've that uh, we th- there was a meeting booked that was titled "Thank You, Eric," and uh, I went to this meeting. And you know how, like in an office setting, people would like pass around a card, and everyone would write a little cute thing, like, yeah. blah blah blah. Uh, they had done this, but with um, like slides and a PDF. And so each one had written their own in their own horrible font, uh, and including the photos of me that they had and memories and things. And they sort of just sort of went through this and like were like, uh, had a great time with you. It's great, lovely to work with you. Uh, it, so I'm shocked to hear this. What, what was what was in the making? I mean, you, uh, a, d- a different, better opportunity or just? Oh, why did I quit my job? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love this job. I love this job. Uh, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, slightly. And when I say slightly, I mean slightly better uh, opportunity that better fits me uh, made itself. Uh, Your skill set? It materialized. Your yeah, skill. my skill set, my, closer to my skill set. Um, and it's like. Doing things you'd rather do. Doing things I'd rather do. And, but boy, like. And my uh, my my wife, who's very 
conservative when it comes to to jobs and like if you have a job just fucking keep it like don't don't ruin your don't like quit a job uh <laughs> and but like and if you look at it as if it were like a personal thing it's like it's like i i left a really amazing wife for a for for another wife that like uh shares one of my hobbies or something that's, right that's, it's like that's pretty unwoke of you to use to, to use to use that this is her this is this is my wife's uh metaphor oh that's interesting uh so it was like it's like you so who are you alito are you judge alito blaming his wife it, for the flag exactly <laughs> no but like it's like so like yeah, if, I got if it were you. personal I got but you. if but it's freaking business and you know whatever uh, so anyway um I today was my last day at my job, and on Monday I start full time at my next one. Uh, How much of a break? Couldn't you have gotten a little bit more? Uh, I probably could have, but like uh, I don't really want to because I want to jump you want into the, the money next thing. To roll. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're eager to eager to start. Well, that's but cool. it, but it's it's. Well, congratulations. That's, yes, I thank think you. that's. Uh, it's a big move, but it, big it, move. it's it's always kind of like any time. I don't know, like high school graduation or college graduation or any time you change jobs, where you go from seeing a group of people uh, every day to not seeing them again uh, is kind of it's a it's a chapter turn. Um, takes its toll it takes its emotional toll but uh well and i i i it's interesting i i started working again as you yes. know which could be a full-time contract it, and the way that it's populated money wise time wise it can be full-time but what is full-time for me you know and what is a day in the definition of the legal definition. What is a day, man? As a, as a consultant, as a contractor, when I'm on a deliverables contract, I get paid for the deliverables. It doesn't matter how many hours it takes. Yes. It, you know, <clears throat> but you you negotiate your price based on how many hours you think, how many days you think it will take. Sure. And you, you price it that way. And it's a communication that isn't going to show itself in the contract because it's deliverables, but it's an agreement you've got to reach, you know, right. the negotiation. And uh, uh, for a contractor, though, I don't, it, it isn't like I, you're paying me for my, just for my labor in my daily rate. You're, you're paying my uh, personal enterprise, right. which is an office and computers and Telephones and printers and ink and a, a place I have to work. And your thoughts uh, you know. when you're when you're not sitting at your desk. Uh, all of that, right. all of that. I every four, every hour and a half at the stretch, depending on the intensity of the work or the complication of the work, it may be only forty five minutes before I get up to go think about what I need to do with this document right. or how I'm going to the importance of it. How you know? How does that fit within my contract? I got to think about these things. I'm not gonna sit there with my hands on the keyboard. Exactly. I get up and and so it doesn't much matter what I do as long as I take a little walk or do whatever. Which but which is why which also, is why the old idea of the office job where your boss is watching you sit at a desk is so broken. For for knowledge work for what you and I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's but the the rate that you get the day has to pay for all that stuff, sure. and so you gotta have an overhead. I know what my overhead is because I claim it on taxes every year. I get a benefit, tax benefit, because uh, my office is ready for use. If anybody wants to meet me in my office, they walk up my walkway, they knock on my front door, they come into my foyer, they walk up the stairs. They want to go to the bathroom. It's to the right. If I got somebody in my office, they could sit down in the sitting room. Huh. And then when they're ready to come in, they come in my little office and they sit down. So everything from the front door to the fire to the stairs, the fire, the uh, staircase, to the sitting room, the bathroom in my office, all that square footage yep. is a percentage of my house. Sure, it's like fifteen percent of my house, sixteen, eighteen percent of my house. That office, then, in my taxes. 
every bill for this house, the mortgage, the insurance, the waste pickup, everything, the Wi-Fi, 18% of all those expenses are applied as a tax credit. And I get, I have to pay $5,600 less. That's... So I know my overhead. That That's very wise of you. Like, uh, my... When, so part of going to this new job is I'm switching from being a W-2 employee with, uh, with my taxes uh, withdrawn to working through an LLC where my a sole member LLC. So I'm billing this new company. Uh, and therefore I can expense stuff to that LLC. Like this new monitor yeah. I just bought I bought yeah. with the credit card from from the from the company because I'm going to be using it uh, to do work for that business, uh, <clears throat> and it's still kind of scary to me uh, and more so to my wife of boy this like it sort of feels uh, taking expenses as. Uh, t- buying things and saying, oh, this is an expense to someone that's never been in that world feels like cheating. Like it feels almost fraudulent, right? Uh, and I need to, and like I, I got an accountant uh, recommended by our mutual friend, John White. Well, all um, you need to do is think of the your tax rate, my tax rate right now, is 21%. So every time I make a dollar, I'm giving 21 cents over to the federal government. 21% compared to corporate taxes, which are 3, 6, 10, yeah, right. so, 21. Right, but, but that's I, about what I was... small business tax. But that's about what I was paying, what it felt like I was paying just as an employee. I, I mean, I, I could be wrong. I never actually looked at the number, but it felt around there. Um so no you'd be wrong because you as an employee you weren't getting charged for small business tax right so less i get punished i get punished for being a small businessman i get taxed you're not that small though i mean you're pretty tall (laughs) that's small it's large of you to say so (laughs) so uh but anyway it's a it's a change and i'm uh concerned about yeah how it's going to be and how it's going to go and but it's new, uh, new, new, new world. Well, I've, I decided that I, I like to work half days. Oh, the, uh, this. I, I work half days, and then I, and then the balance of living in the home that I've got to take care of and mowing the lawns, and also the blessing of having our grandbabies here, one a day, every day, five days, and some you know needed interaction with them, uh, and then knocking off early three o'clock three thirty to pick them up from school right. take them out to eat or whatever i mean half days work out well and i realized that of course of course it's up to me it's a deliverables contract right i've got this entire span of the contract so i wrote a work plan the other day and got it approved today that broke all of my work into three phases and each phase has four deliverables and each deliverable is a written document all coded you know deliverable 2.3 2.4 there are all these research pieces and i'm well on my way uh but the uh the the my point is the feeling of getting back into that again and the anxiety yes of and it, it's 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 hard uh, for i me promise to this anxiety from thrill Right. Because I am thrilled to be able to work, and I know I'm never worried about being able to deliver because I over deliver. Right. Always have, always will, and I do it sooner and earlier than anybody expects. It's it's my it's my calling card. So I did the first. I looked at all the deliverables before I did my work plan and kind of knew what they were based on what the statement of work said. And I looked at her decision making and when she was going to have communication, I jumped around the contract a little bit and I started developing research background documents for her that would be helpful for her first meeting. And then while, while those were in her hands a week in advance of nice. the first meeting, I got ready for her second meeting, which would result from that and didn't 
uh, so much send her the stuff, but it developed and 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 and, uh, and kept myself busy. And then when it was clear that she had read the materials I sent, I sent others, including the day of the call, which I sent her a one pager that got at a very intricate issue that she needed to be aware of so that she was so smart about something on the phone. Yeah, baby. That she was confident. And she wrote me and said, you're the best. And that was when I sent her the two-pager or the three-pager. And then the, the, the anyway. This is the rest of my contract. She has, yeah. she has a meeting. And nice. so we're, we do a debrief call. And she tells me about her meeting and says, oh, my God, I was so well prepared. And blah, blah, blah. We go back and forth. And I said, I sent you a work plan. I got it. And she said, well, listen. She said, as far as I'm concerned, you've delivered everything that your contract expects. I've got everything I, I think I need. And I said, well, you don't. <laughs> uh, and I know that. And what's in my work plan is giving you the other stuff because this is what you have to know. How big is your risk in funding this company? How big is your risk? You've got to get them to, to do a realistic a CBA cost-benefit analysis so you know how what is their capability to save money for their clients. You've got to know that. Because your your plan is to, is for them to save money and reinvest it in human services. It's a philanthropic desire. Less on prisons, more on services. You got to have real money to invest. It can't be, oh, you know, we would have spent if it weren't for our services, they would have spent another million dollars. No, that's where's the million dollars? See, right? you're like. So anyway, that was gratifying for her to say, you've already delivered everything. I well, no, and I can't, to your point about feeling guilty, I'm not going to bill her and say, oh, great, cool, then pay me. No, but like another me. asshole, the kind that would put a sticker on someone's car, would have been like, yeah, right, uh -huh. here's the rest of the bill. But you're the yeah, kind of person right, that, cool. would, that would call the person uh, before they got to the, to the hotel and yeah. like talk to them. Like, that's the difference. Well. You know what the other thing is? What's the other thing? Now that you mention it, I'm glad you mentioned it. When I went to the restaurant and I was waiting at the bar, they had to have my cell phone number. They had my name. They had my cell phone number and my name. That meant that at any point in time, they could have connected those dots and said, that guy who came in the white car, his name is Dennis. Here's his, here's his telephone number. Uh -huh. Call him and tell him his two hours is almost up. We'd hate to have to tow away his vehicle. Yep. That's what the guy at Victoria's uh, Resort would do. Victoria's Secret, yep. No, no secret, man. It's a lovely grounds. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll remember to send you a couple of pictures. Yeah, I, I looked at the, at the website. I will put that in the show notes. Um, well, the pictures you see <clears throat> online are, are, are actually quite, quite good. Um, kind of a quaint place, you know, nice neighborhood. And a little walk downhill. You go in front of the, the harbor. There's a river called Black River, so and it's all docked out. The reason that I stayed up late last night in order to receive the glorious news from the heavens. Uh, yes, the 34, the number of the day. What's the number of the day? 34. 34. Yes. Uh, was because I watched the first episode of Mayor of Kingstown. Of what? Mayor of Kingstown. Uh, I, I was really? able to acquire the series. Uh, How did the you get that early? And, no, 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 no. The that very first it. episode. The very first episode. Oh, oh, I'm, oh. I'm starting oh. from nothing. Oh, that's right. And, you found it. And I I was excited because there was an actor that I liked that uh, didn't survive the first episode, uh, which was kind of sad. I think he was the actual Chandler? Mayor. Chandler. Sure. I don't know what... That's the actor's name. Yeah, yeah that sounds right. Um, and, good God, like, show pilots need to be very... The, the art of writing a show pilot is, is different from the rest of writing a show because you need to engage the audience and tell such a story and get the audience hooked. But this felt like a movie. It was it was one hour long, but it felt like three hours. Like there was so much content and story and yeah. and character development. Well, and, you, and Renner was in every screen. I mean, you just can't take your eyes off him. He is 
he is such a, a natural, uh, intense, brooding, comp- complicated yeah. guy in, in the stuff that he does, and he's so furious. Yeah. And he's so powerful in his compact. But I, I, I don't know his stats. I my guess would he's five he, seven. He seems like a little a little fella, eight. and he's yeah. he's not that conventionally uh, handsome, but. Um, well, uh, at this age and in this show, not so right, much. Right, but as, as a youngster, he was, he was to the, yeah. to the uh, shows he did with Matt Damon, the... Um, oh, Saving Private Ryan, was he in that? Spy thrillers. Uh, the, um, What's that? Uh, Matt born, Damon series. Born... Born, born, uh, born identity, yeah. born legacy. Yeah, he was in... He was in a little bit in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was in uh, uh, the Bomb Squad one. Um... Uh, Hidden Locker? Uh, Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, that was, uh, intense. Yes, it was. Uh, so, anyway, I now have these. Will I find the time to consume them? Will I be able to catch up to you on now season three well, or whatever? Well, uh, interestingly know. enough, second season starts uh, in a week. No, not second. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but there's um, there's been like three seasons so far. Uh, uh, no, uh, there's been two seasons. Third, third season is what's starting. Well, I've seen a yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. okay. But I've, it, but the next season yes. is starting. So hey, listen, I gotta go. I gotta go. I I gotta, gotta go. go too. Uh, good luck with. Uh, Life and may no one stick any shit to your car. That's what I always say. Sometimes stuff just sticks in your car. And sometimes in your in your car, as they say this in Boston. This is what I'm going to do. I want let's do an AI. Yeah. Of this restaurant in the background, and the guy who works there at the you know the welcome guy. Yeah. He has one of these stickers over his face. That's a good one. If I knew what the sticker looked like, I could maybe do that. But oh, it's it just a yellow sticker with lines on it, with your code, your card, your car name, and then a thing that says, you know, active participant active, seated active only. Vessel. Blah blah yeah. blah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so we're off to uh, our favorite, by far, uh, Italian uh, uh, restaurant, best pizza I've ever had in my life anywhere. Okay. Crisp oven oven baked. Can't wait. I'm out of here, man. Okay. Enjoy your pizza. Where's my thumb? Oh, there it is. I'm trying to put the thumb in front of you. Pizza. Do that. Pizza. Hey, well, I want to fill English, please. A rasher of pizza. Okay, that's it for episode number 221. I'm not sure what that background noise was. We'll have to investigate that. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 221, where you can find links to both the lovely place where Dennis stayed and the horrible restaurant where you should not give their business. And you can give us business at patreon.com slash happyhour. We would really appreciate it. See you next week.